Hi guys, it's 8am on a Sunday morning. I got up because I woke up freezing and I wanted to adjust the reflex stove and I noticed that it was minus 8 degrees Celsius outside and 13 degrees Celsius here inside the boat. That is certainly one of the big disadvantages to having a reflex stove, there's no thermostat. But now that we're up, we might as well get started and I think the first order of business is to take Jökul for a walk. It's a beautiful morning. It's a cold, but really beautiful morning. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but the marina has frozen and the ice looks to be about three or four inches thick. Oh, it certainly isn't warm outside. I think I might have mentioned in the beginning of this video that you can't get a thermostat for a reflex stove, and that's actually not true. When I purchased my stove, the option wasn't in their catalogue, but I've seen it since then. The thing is, it requires a slightly different regulator than the one I've got on my stove, so that's why I don't have a thermostat on my reflex stove. I think that's something I might want to splurge on about my next boat though. Anyways, I want to show you a bunch of different stuff in this video, and first up is an update on the Froli travel system. I'm sure most of you guys remember the Froli sleep system I put in about two months back. I put in the Froli sleep system because I was having some issues with moisture underneath my mattress, and also because I thought it might add a bit of extra comfort. So for the last two months I've been experimenting with different minor adjustments. For the first month or so after having put in the uh, Foley sleep system, I had no issues with moisture underneath the mattress. But then the outside temperature started dropping, which in turn made the bottom of my bunk colder, which increased the temperature difference between the hot air from the mattress and the cold bottom of the bunk, and I instantly started having issues with moisture underneath the mattress again. So I think what's happening is that the hot air from the mattress is condensating on the cold surface of the bottom of the bunk. But uh, let me show you. As you can see, the bottom of my bunk here isn't exactly nice and toasty, and that makes sense because the hull underneath the V-berth isn't insulated. I don't think any amount of air circulation that I can feasibly create underneath the mattress is going to solve that issue, so it seems to me the next logical step is to insulate the bottom of the bunk. Oh, and I just wanted to show you that I've put in a rubber sheet on top of the mattress here, and that's this layer right here. And this acts as a vapor barrier so that no moisture from my body gets into the mattress. And that helped a lot. It took care of the vast majority of the moisture underneath the mattress. But there is still some moisture there. So uh, let's see what happens when we insulate the bottom of the bunk. To insulate the bottom of the bunk, of course, it makes the most sense to place the insulation underneath the bottom of the bunk or on the hull even. But today I just want to do a quick test. So I'm going to grab some of this roll a mat and place it on top of the bunk just to see if it makes any kind of difference before I start tearing the boat apart. That certainly doesn't look pretty but that's not the point. I just want to do a quick test to see what kind of difference it makes adding a bit of insulation. For those of you keeping track we now have a layer of insulation, the Foley sleep system, the rubber sheet, and then we have this layer and normally the sheet would go on top of this. But about a week ago, I added this layer. This is a heated under blanket. As you saw, my bunk gets quite cold and slipping in between the covers at night into something that's four or five degrees Celsius isn't really all that comfortable. I got this heated under blanket for two reasons. Firstly, it helps heat up the bunk and in that regard, it's kind of like my electric girlfriend and I have started referring to it as my electric girlfriend. <laughs> so yeah. And secondly, whenever it gets cold during the night, it's a lot easier to turn this up a notch than it is to get out of bed and adjust the reflex stove. So I actually think this is probably the best thing I've spent money on since moving aboard the boat. But let's get back to the Foley sleep system. When I get back home from the Atlantic crossing, I'm going to shoot part two of the Foley sleep system video. 
I like their product, although it didn't solve my issue with moisture underneath the mattress on its own. I only think that's fair considering how cold my bunk is. As for comfort, well, I will say that during the first month or so after putting in the sleep system, I woke up with a sore shoulder on three or four occasions. It hasn't happened since then, though. And, well, there are a few more drawbacks to this product, but uh, stay tuned for part two of the Foley Sleep System video. But now to something completely different. You guys remember this product, right? Boo! Well, this guy showed up a couple of days ago. It's a titanium version of the Bullet. And, well, I actually think it's some kind of cast aluminum. It's not titanium, but it's called titanium. And I went for the titanium version because it's not all that more expensive than the regular Bullet. And also I've been chatting with Drake on the Paragon, and he's been having some issues with his bullets getting destroyed, uh, probably due to water ingress, and this has a little bit better waterproofing than the regular bullet. But I am very much looking forward to uh, really getting to play with this thing. I have played with it on sort of an initial level, and... What? Okay guys, I, I gotta show you this. This is my neighbor's cat, it's really cute, and... Uh, Sometimes it stops by the boat. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. He's right there. Hi, kitty! Oh, well, luckily Yurkul hasn't seen him. But uh, let's get back to the uh, video here. So, I am really looking forward to uh, getting to play with this, uh, with this device here. And uh, I've done sort of an initial test and it looks a lot better than the Groove Diff. Both in regards to usability, but also in regards to the uh, strength of the signal that you get and the throughput. So, yay for the bullet! Next up, I want to show you something I should have gotten a long time ago. It's this little guy, a carbon monoxide detector. It's a really, really good idea to have one of these aboard your boat, and especially here aboard my boat, considering that I'm using diesel to heat the boat. But let's take a look at this little guy and see what's inside the box. It is a little bit big, but at least I feel a lot safer having this aboard the boat. So now I just need to figure out where to put it. And ideally an alarm should be fitted in every room. Well, that's easy. I only have one room. <laughs> and it is strongly... It should be located close to the ceiling at a height greater than the height of any door or window. Well, that's going to be difficult. But, uh, yeah, okay. So as high as possible. For now, I'll simply just put the detector up here on top of the tiny locker. Okay guys, I know there was something else I wanted to show you or tell you in this video, but I can't for the life of me remember what it was, and it's not in my notes for this video. It'll have to wait till the next video. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video guys. See you! The video you just saw was shot five days ago. Normally I like to stay as close to real time as possible with my videos, but I've just been so extremely busy that I haven't had the time to sit down and edit this video, and that's why you haven't seen it yet. But in this case, that's actually a good thing, because five days after shooting the first part of this video, I remembered what it was I forgot to mention, and that's an update on the engine. The engine is ready to go back in the boat. All the gaskets have been replaced, and it should be good as new. A few weeks back, I was even out at the mechanics workshop painting it, so it looks beautiful. But the thing is, for me to be able to put the engine back in the boat, the boat needs to be moved over to the crane that we've got here in the marina. That's the same crane we used to step the mast a few months back. But seeing as the boat is frozen solid right now, I have serious doubts as to whether or not I can actually do that before leaving to cross the Atlantic. But hey, that doesn't matter. There's one more thing I want to mention, and uh, that's a video I mentioned a few weeks back, I think. A video about some of the gear that I'll bring with me on the Atlantic crossing. And I'm going to shoot that video next weekend, because there are a few more items I wanted to get my hands on before shooting the video. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, guys, I want to sit down and edit this video so that I can publish it right now. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. For real this time. <laughs> See you! Yukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. 
please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.